Macros help us automate repetitive tasks, giving you more time to focus on the really important stuff. And all a macro really is, is a recording of different steps, different commands that you execute in Excel, converted to VBA code, which we can then rerun at a later time on different data. So for example, if maybe each week you receive a report from a colleague and you have to go through and tidy up that report, maybe you have to remove the blank rows, maybe you have to apply number formatting to particular columns, maybe you need to add and format a heading and then maybe print that report. Well, instead of doing all of those repetitive tasks each week, you could create a macro which you can click on, which will execute all of those steps for you. So macros are effectively a really great time-saving feature. And throughout the balance of this section, I'm going to show you how you can record some simple to more complex macros, how you can understand the basics of VBA code, and I'm going to show you how you can make your macros really user-friendly and how you can create your own macro ribbons to make them easy to access. Now, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's just take a look at some macros in action so you can understand exactly what they do. And I have quite a few examples in this workbook of useful macros. Now, one thing you have to remember with macros is that you're going to find them on the developer tab. So once again, if you don't have this developer tab turned on, then you're going to need to go into Excel options like we did for form controls and make sure that you have a tick in the box. Once you do, you're going to be able to see this first group here called code, and this basically contains all of the commands you need to run and execute macros. Now, for the time being, or for at least this lesson, we don't really need this because I've already created the macros for each of these worksheets. And if you're curious as to where those macros are housed, if we click on the macros button, you can see the different macros that I have set up in this workbook. So what we're going to do is we're going to run each of these so you can see how they work. So this first macro, this is going to help me delete all the blank rows from this data set. So you can see that we have a few blank rows running throughout this data set. And it might be that I have a worksheet that has thousands of rows that I quickly want to remove the blank rows from. Now, because I've set this up in a macro, all I need to do is click on the macros button find the correct macro, which is this one here, delete blank rows, and click on run. And would you take a look at that? Like magic, all of those blank rows have now been deleted. On the next worksheet, I want to apply a counting format to columns D all the way across to column J. Currently, the values in these columns just have general formatting applied. And I want to change this to a counting format. Now, I've already set up a macro to do this. So if we jump into the developer ribbon, open up macros, it's this one just here, accounting format. Now, you're going to see a few easier ways of executing these macros as we go through this section. You're not expected to come into this macro area each time, find the macro and click on run because you can use a keyboard shortcut or you can assign it to the quick access toolbar. But we're going to talk about that a bit later on. For the time being, let's just run them from here. So I'm going to select accounting format and click on the run button. Now notice it's only applied accounting format to the cell I was clicked on. So another really important point about macros, make sure that you select the cell range that you want to run them on. So control shift down. That looks pretty good. Let's rerun that macro. And now I have a counting format applied to all of those cells. Let's jump across to the next worksheet. In this example, I want to format this data as a table. Let's open up our macros. Let's find the correct macro, which is this one just here, format as table and click on run. Hopefully you're seeing how much quicker this can be. What about if I want to do things like apply conditional formatting? Well, I can do that too using a macro. All I need to do here is select the range that I want to apply the data bars to, and then I can go into macros. Let's choose the data bars macro and click on run. I can also use a macro to remove all hyperlinks from these URLs. So I'm going to select the range. 
open up macros, and this time we're going to choose remove hyperlink. As you can see, it makes automating all of these types of tasks a lot quicker. Now we're just doing single tasks here, and we are going to look at a more complex example as we go through this section. But let's take a look at a couple more examples. What about if I want to apply some conditional formatting? Well, we have a macro for that. I can select all of the data, go to macros, let's choose highlight cells and click on run. So this macro is highlighting all cells that are greater than $9,000. What about this next one? Here we want to calculate the percentage of profit to revenue. And notice that I have a button just above that says calculate percentage. Now what this means is that all I need to do is highlight the cells and I can just click calculate percentage and I get the result that I'm looking for. And we're also going to see how we can assign macros to buttons in this section as well. Now the final macro I have in here, which I haven't yet showed you, is the new worksheet macro. Because we can use macros to do things like create new workbooks. If I run this one, notice that at the bottom I now have a new worksheet called Sheet 1. So those are some really nice examples of how you can use or how you can incorporate macros into your daily work to streamline your workflow and automate repetitive tasks. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.